time, the week before this, uh, when Charles was officially moved to Brazil, that was our 100th Charles Tyler podcast on here on Block Talk Radio. And today's 101. And uh, just before I turn Charles over, Charles, that picture that you have, people, if you listen to Blog Talk Radio on the Internet, uh, and you see the scrolling marquee, you'll see a, a, a picture of Charles uh, with, uh, I don't know, that might be his future wife. <laughs> I don't know about that. But, you know, you know. If I went down there and saw her on my first visit, I, I might burn my pet with the not comics to be in <laughs> Anyway, that's my good people. Here's Charles Tavern. Charles, what, what's going to do? Well, man, like I said, man, first things first, man. Good to be back, V. I wanted to, I've been, um, I'm not sure if a lot of people know I was real sick last week. Okay. I was down for like a whole week, not to mention with the NBA playoffs and everything like that. Congratulations to the Golden State Warriors, the 2016-17 NBA champions. Okay, you know, much love out to the Cleveland Cavaliers, too. Give them a good try, you know. But uh, we had to uh, crown our new champion, a super team. I don't even know if anybody can beat them, you know. You know, I mean, going through the playoffs, only one loss, you know. And that right there is pretty big, pretty significant. But, um... You know, but now I'm a little bit more healthier, all right, I'm, you know, back and ready to go. And, yeah, y'all guys, y'all see me on the beach today. And, um, you know, the ladies down here, like, like I said, man, it, it's down here. Find a fine woman ain't a thing, okay? You know, they, that, that, that's, that just comes, that comes with the territory. That comes with the airline ticket, okay? But, um. What I've noticed, right, a lot of brothers have been, you know, I, I get a lot of my content from a lot of the emails I get, you know, a lot of the um, posts I get in our Facebook group, you know, and I look at some guys here back in the Matrix, and I see they flush right here. It's easy for me to say I'm 6, 000, five, five, 6,000 miles away, you know. But I see a lot of frustration going on back in the Matrix, man. Not to mention that we got a crazy-ass motherfucker for president. He just made it harder now. From what I understand, he made it harder now for brothers to go travel to Cuba now. Just when the market was about to open. Okay? Now, I told, I, I told all these pro-Trump, where are y'all guys? Y'all, I mean, they're getting more quiet. Or every, they're getting just more and more quiet by the day. All these pro-Trump dudes that was telling me I didn't know what the hell I was talking about, okay? You know, and I don't hear them. I hear crickets now. I, I don't see them popping up, on, popping up on Facebook. I don't see them, you know, calling up the show, saying I'm wrong and all this other stuff. But now Trump done made it that much more harder for, for Americans to travel to um to Cuba. So that's one less destination spot for a brother to go to. You know. You know, and it, it's a sad situation. It's a sad situation. But what I also find is sad next to a an idiot in chief, all right, is that um there's a lot of brothers out here who are just literally Acting like key sweats to some of these chicks out here in the Matrix. You know, now, the thing is, like I said before, yeah, they may say, oh, it's easy for you to say this and that. No, it is not, you know. I mean, because I, you know, most of my, um, most of my experiences come from, you know, physical, actual experiences. You know, at one point, I used to think that I would stay in a relationship, a bad relationship, a relationship I know I have no business being in, back in the Matrix, and I would ride it out until the bitter end, okay, and in the end, and the longer I stay in the relationship, the more I lose financially, mentally, and everything like that, physically too as well, and it's always been, well, I don't want to go back on that long, dreary hunt of trying to find another woman. 
So these guys, they stay in these relationships and they stay to a point to where it literally mentally destroys them or has them go out and do something crazy. You know, and, you know, it's like, I just feel a little sad for some of the brothers, but the key to all of it is just changing your field of play. Okay? Changing where you are so used to changing your comfort zone. All right. A lot of dudes got to learn how to break out from their comfort zone. All right. And go and try other things that are new. Okay. Whether it's traveling, whether it's, you know, doing something to get away from a bad situation that they're already in, because it's not going to get any better. Okay. And all, you know, and like I say, when I started traveling and I started going places and then I started finding different types of women. The thing about it is what brothers got to realize, they are mad, mad women all over the world. Okay. My comfort zone is down here in Brazil. And yes, they are mad, mad women all over this country right here alone. Okay. And I just wish a lot of brothers would just partake in the opportunity of traveling and finding this out instead of keeping themselves hostage in bad situations back in the matrix okay you know and you know it, it's like I said I've been hearing guys one guy um uh, sent me a um me of course nameless um sent me a post saying man I, I want to leave this girl so much but I, I just can't. It took me about five years to get with her, just get just get into a relationship. I don't want to, you know, wait another five years to looking to find another woman. I've been in this relationship so long, I don't know no better. You know, well, like I said, I told her brother, I said, well, look, man, you're going to have to learn new things. Okay? You can't stay doing the same thing over and over and over again. What's the definition of insanity? Trying the same thing over and over again and expecting a different outcome. Okay? That's the definition of insanity. And a lot of these brothers out here, they go out here, they hook up with these chicks. Uh, the guy even told me, he said, look, man, he said, the girl has uh, four kids. I said, none of them is his. You know? And, and let me tell you something. I don't hate on dudes who take care of, you know, you know, you know, single mothers, you know, because there's many reasons why a woman is a single mother. Okay. All right. And it's not all negative. Anything can happen. You know, my brother, his, his, um, his current wife, she already had a daughter. What happened? Her boyfriend at the time got, he got killed. He got murdered. Okay. Oh, well, you know, my brother stepped in. They got married eventually. He adopted her daughter, and they took that. They, they start all over, and then they also had a child of their own. So I, when I see a lot of dudes, hey, you know, all single mothers are not bad. But anyway, going back to the t going back to the um the topic here is some dudes take on too much responsibility, and then when the rug gets pulled under from them. You know, because she done went on, hooked up, made another bad decision, and hooked up with another dude or whatever. They, um, the kids now, they, oh, man, I got to stay in it for the kids or this and that. Nah, man. You know? I mean, you can, you can go handle your own business, you know? You know, this is your chance to escape. This is your chance to be out, you know? Like I said, man, the best thing going right now. And while we still can, like I said, we got a maniac for a president right now. Who's to say what he's going to be starting doing? He already done cut off. He's going to be cutting off um, Cuba. God knows who else. He's going, to, he's going to probably cut off this whole world sooner or later. And they don't get this fool out of office soon. So I'm, I'm just telling brothers to do, do it while you can. Get your passports. This is a, a very pivotal moment right now. All right. I knew it was coming when this fool became president. And now I know that brothers got to get their passports. Why are they giving them away practically? 
right? I'm seeing brothers left and right, dudes who have um who have criminal records. Maybe not serious or anything like that, but they're getting their passports. So when you get your passport, when you get when you get all these things, you start traveling, go to countries like Brazil, like Thailand, like Colombia, and everything like that, like I mentioned several times in my show before, is that you'll start seeing a whole new world and you'll get to a point. Once you come back to the U.S., that's why I always tell brothers to take the one trip. It starts with the the first trip. Once you come back to the U.S., you come back with a complete different mindset, a complete didn't swagger about yourself to where some, you know, some cheap cockroach, cockroach hoe run up on you and, you know, bad mouth. Oh, you remember you wanted this? Uh, yeah, I remember I wanted that. Now I want to throw up. Okay. You'll have that mindset because you've been upgraded. And like I said, the, the chick that y'all saw in my arms this afternoon, oh, man, she was a fine little mama. But she's just one of thousands of fine little mamas all over the place. Okay? I'm not falling struck in love with her. You know? And when you come down here, it goes beyond looks now because there's so many looks, so many fine-looking women out here. You now got to go find a woman that has something to offer. Okay, that's where I'm. That's where I'm at right now. I need a woman that has something to offer me, other than just pussy, because it's sub shucks, man. I mean, there's a whole ocean of pussy right out there, just a couple, just a block away. Okay, you know, and that's where it comes down to. And all, uh, quick question there, V. How are lines looking? Oh, you did a call in on my. That wants to get in. Okay. Uh, you ready to call? Yes, we are ready for all callers now. Okay. Uh, anybody that wants to get in, uh, that's already in the studio, press one and let's call our first caller at area code 917. 917 New York. Come on in. Another man from another man. What's up, Charles? It's James in New York, brother. What's going on, James? How you feeling, brother? <laughs> Everything's cool, brother. Officer Dooley in the house. Uh, I, will, I, I, I tell you, brother, you are absolutely right. I heard somebody say someone was, if, if you say it, it's okay, but if they say it, it's so. I can tell you that, you know, even when I first started hearing about what you were talking about, about Brazilian women this, Brazil this, Brazilian women that, Brazil that, I said to myself, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Looks like a real nice place. I want to go somewhere that most people have ever been. Anyway, I'm going to Rio. But, bro, when you, when you, when you, I can tell you firsthand, I don't look at American women the same anymore. Mm -hmm. After experiencing Brazil. Like, I, I play games with the guys I work with now. You know, we'll um, see a woman and they'll say, okay, in, in here in America, She's a nine. What is she in Brazil? <laughs> Probably a three, a four. I would say, ah, ah, give her a good six. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. It changes your perspective. You know, I, I, I think the part of the problem is, you know, most brothers in the U.S. are at the sisters in the U.S. Like, we, you know, we're not like Brazilians where we mix a lot. You know what I mean? Even though that's changing, most brothers want to stick with our sisters. We're loyal to our sisters. So our sisters are a little spoiled. They're a little they're used to having the first right of refusal, mm -hmm. right? They used to be in the only Chinese restaurant in the neighborhood, and if you want chicken wings and fried rice, then that's where you have to go. Uh -huh. So they'll prepare it however it is that they want to prepare it, and charge you whatever it is that they want to charge you because they're the only game in town. There isn't any competition. That's right. So. They've gotten used to not having much competition. Now, you'll see the game change a little bit. Like, here in New York, the ratio is so ridiculous. But when you go down to a place like Atlanta, where the ratio is crazy, then you'll see that women will treat you differently just because there's so much so much female competition. Oh, yeah. But then when you go down to a place like Rio, where not only is there some female competition, but their culture and the way they treat men is different, then it opens you up and 
it opened you up to a whole new world, a whole new world of possibilities. Yeah. And a whole new world of options. And then when you come back, the, the, the systems are upset when you come back. So they'll do one of two things. They'll do one thing to try to shun you all together. Or you get a heck of a lot more cooperation than you had when you were before you left. Because I'm experiencing that now. Yeah, because <laughs> like I said, you know, you know what I told that we're on the fence. I don't know. We'll see. I come back now when the world is my oyster. Oh, I thought you were going to leave and fall in love with a Brazilian girl and never come back. And I'm glad you're back. <laughs> Yeah, but your back. The thing is, right? Your back. You should have been treating. You should have been treating me like this before I left. Oh, but here's the thing. Here's the thing, James. You're back, but you're not really back. Okay. The way you you're were. Right. The way you're you right. were when you left. The way you were before you left was left behind. For good. Okay. You completely knew now. Yeah. You know. And I'm pretty sure that the the women that the women in your picture are noticing that they he's not the same guy anymore, okay? Yeah. You know, and, and the thing about it is now, I, I, um, James, I know you've seen it out there, man. I know you've seen it out there, and, you know, because because yeah. of your line of work, you see these dudes flipping the fuck out over these over these not worthless broads, acting like Keith Sweat, baby. Please don't leave me. Please don't leave me. You know, and, and no, they, I have got 20 years of stories <laughs> about stuff just like that, brother. Because <laughs> they call the cops, and here I come, and look at these cats. That's like, bro, seriously. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I wiggle my head because these do, and it, you know, the, like I said, with all the, the posts and, and the, the, the PMs that I get and everything like that, and I get guys who are telling me, Yo, man, I, I don't know what I'm going to do, man. I may have to take that trip. You know, I, oh, okay. You know, yeah, man, because, you know, my girl leaving me, you know, and, you know, and she, she, she's this and she's that, you know. I'm like, you know, okay, well, you, you know, uh, what did she have coming through the table is the question. I first thing I asked myself, okay, with all this stuff that you're saying that she might be taking away from you, what did she have when she mm -hmm. came to you? Okay, well, she had these kids. Uh, she had no place to live. Uh, this and this and this and that. And I'm like, well, it sounds like but she had exactly nothing. What she, had. she had somebody else's kids and a fat ass. That's pretty much it. <laughs> exactly. But see, like I said, when when a lot of the brothers bite, we don't know no better because we don't. A lot of they, a lot of they don't know. They don't see the world, man. They don't see how big, no. especially African American men are. Okay. Yeah. They think that we extremely here here in the Matrix. We you know here, you know back in the U.S. Things are so limited for black men. Yeah. If you look on TV, all you see is white men taking our sisters. All right. You know they taking our sisters on TV big time. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know. They make the white man's dick that much longer than the black man. Yeah. And then now you got black women out here forming their own groups now. African American women now forming their own groups. You know, oh well, if you if you if you can't get Dwayne, I mean, oh, what is it? How can I say this? If you can't get um, if you can't get Shane. You can get Sam. Kind of messing with a Tyrone, mess with a Todd. I'm yeah, yeah. Man, if you can't get a Tyrone, mess with a Todd. Must mess with, mess with Todd, you know, or something like that. You yeah. know, you know, and they they lit for one. White man ain't stupid. He gonna hit it and he gonna quit it. Okay. Yeah. And well, look at uh, that, that there was that chick from um, all them uh, all them space movies. Um, the the, the uh. The um, the black Latino chick. Oh God, Zoe. Um, if y'all guys can help me, somebody type in her name or something like that. On the, I'm also live on the Facebook group. Anybody who wants to send me a text on the Facebook group, Afro American men and Brazilian uh, Afro American men versus Brazilian women and women abroad. Would you date? You can also send me a text right there. I'll answer your question on that too as well. All right. 
all our members in that group. But um, if somebody can tell me her name. Zoe something. I know it's Zoe or Zoe, whatever. Zoe Chaldana. Huh? Yeah. Zoe Chaldana. Oh, yeah. Zoe's okay. Yeah. yeah. Also, my man, uh, thanks, Hal. Yeah, my man, Hal Brown over there. He just, he, he poured talk to her name. Zoe's not, now, you got to remember, that chick, she's an actress. She's bringing money. Yeah, she's yeah. a black, she's a black Dominican. Okay. And she's bringing in money. Okay. So of course that white boy, bum ass white boy that she sent white boy that she with, that she that she's ruling for what I seen. I, they had her out there in public and she was literally ruling his ass. Okay, you know. Here's the thing about about whirling that black women don't seem to understand. Because I've worked with enough white guys to know. Rule number one: most of the time, that this is like an absolute. But most of the time, when a when a white dude is gonna take a black black chick, it's because that's a black woman that is hot enough where most guys in different racial groups will look at her and say, "Damn, she's hot. I'll get with her." So you're talking about the top maybe ten percent of black women anyway who are hot enough to be able to appeal to different ethnic groups because it's just like anything else. Some women are so hot that guys from any racial group or ethnic group are looking at her and say, "Damn, she's fine." Yeah, I mean you got you got your standouts into that group. Anybody else, anybody, most of the women that don't fit into that group, the, 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 the lower that you are on the one to ten scale, the harder and harder you have, the uh, time you have of trying to swirl. If you're not like that ridiculously hot or you find a white guy, you're lucky enough to find a white guy that's that into you. But and, it's you know, if you're in that category, then 90% of the time, you could be a good one. Well, they call it getting that black card. Yeah, exactly. And the thing about it is, right? They, they, they it, want to experience the black pussy, but they're not married you. They're not hooking up with you. They're not taking you home to their, their parents and run the chance of their entire family disowning them because they're messing with a, with a black woman. Let me tell you I something. I've seen it happen with white guys I work with. They fall in love with a black woman and marry her, and their whole family disowns them. Most that, white that is, guys hook up with black chicks for fun, but they're not dealing with that. They're not going through that. That so disowning part? Makes you with Todd, unless you're super hot, I wish you luck. It ain't going to happen. That disowning part is very true, all right? It's, you know, except for, I mean, in this case, right, my aunt, you know, she, you know, she's white, okay? And when she married my grand, my uncle, and, you know, of course, now they had, they had four kids together and everything like that, she, the only relative I ever seen that ever on her side was her aunt. A mother, a father, or everybody else in the family disowned her. Only her aunt stayed around. You know, so that know, disowning know, part is big. Seen that family in years. Yeah. Yeah, I never ever saw, in all my whole life, I never ever saw my cut, my um, my aunt's other family except for her aunt. So that, that, that part about, see, blacks, we don't do that. We don't do that. We always say, oh, we got a white man in the family. You know, we don't do that. All right, but white people, if you go again, what you bring it home? Who? Oh, guess what? You don't got a family now, and they're going to keep it real, and they don't do it for once, maybe six months come around, or maybe a month, a year, a couple of years come around, or anything. Nah, that's for good. Okay, that is some real work, you know, and you know. A second, man. Uh oh, wait a minute. I'm reading here something here from Hal Brown here. Perfect example, Shanae Nathan, family crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that movie. That was the only of uh, the family that praised together. I remember, um, I remember that movie. That was the only movie where I, who I purposely do not like, um, what's her name? Uh, the chick that married Mike Tyson there. Um, yeah, Shania, I love Shania Nathan. Oh, um, Robin, Robin Brown. Robin Givens, I never liked her. The way Robin she did, yeah. the way she did my man Mike Tyson, I never liked her since, right? But after watching that movie, and I liked Shania, Shania Nathan, right? 
but that almost made me change because of that movie. All right, you know, because you know, oh, she yeah. chase. She, and what did that white dude do? All right, when you know, when the, when the light was put on all of them, their relationships now out there in the open. You know, oh man, he cut her loose so fast it wasn't even funny. Baby, you know, there's no you and me. You know, turn in your car. That's it. You know, and just left her out there in the middle of, left her out there in a the parking lot on the ground crying. Okay. Yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> what I was saying, brothers, brothers are in the situation that they're in with women here in this country because they don't see themselves as valuable and they don't <laughs> see themselves as someone who has options. And so they come to the table with, please, baby, please, baby, please, baby, baby, please, like Spike Lee, as opposed to saying, well, okay, but why should I give you some of my time? And if all you're going to do is just throw yourself at these sisters, that's what they're used to, then you're just another dude, so why should they give you their time? And they have the first right of refusal. So any guy who, 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 who makes them realize that they have to step up their game a little bit in order to get with him, any, any guy that makes them realize that, hey, you know, you have options. You're competing with women from the Dominican Republic because I've been there. You're competing with women from Brazil because I've been there. You're competing. In Europe, because I've been there, so why should you? My wife should I give you my time as opposed to a woman on a different continent? When you're a guy who approaches the game that way, most of the time, all they're going to do is say, "Oh, well, you can go over there because those women are hookers or blah blah blah." And well, see, know, that's that, that right there. That's having to step up their game. My thing is like this. See, it, it's like this. It's like that abusive relationship. All right. Nobody don't want yeah. you. Nobody don't girl. this. You don't that. You know. And if they do want you down there, they want a green card. They want to come to America. And let me tell you something. These days, nobody ain't banging on America's door these days. Okay. Nobody ain't trying to come to this country these days, especially now with an idiot in chief that we got as president. Okay. You know, <laughs> Donald Trump is probably the best. Um, Immigration strategy they have to ever come to ever come to America because now people are like man they some stupid motherfuckers over there I'm trying to go over there you know you know the last smart president like left telling you you know I don't want you and no one else does either exactly and those women don't want you so they're yeah don't let me know hey black man you are beneath me and everyone in Brazil or Dominican Republic or any place else you go those people are beneath me too. So I wish you luck. <laughs> yeah, and the thing about it, the funny thing about it is when they say these things, I mean, I, they act like, especially when they come at me, they act like they've been here. And like I said, every single African American woman that's came down to Brazil that I came across, right? They're looking around and they're just wondering where is our t they, they lost their power. Where's our attention? Where's our attention? Why no? Why mm -hmm. nobody ain't looking at us? Why ain't nobody ain't running up on us trying to get a number so we can give them a cold shoulder? You know. In fact, they're getting the reverse side of the deal. They're looking at brothers. Yeah. Like, I, like I said, back in 2015 at my beach party in there, where all them African American women showed up, right? And everybody's mad at me because I allowed them to shoot. I, I'm like this. I took it that as an opportunity to show brothers what's Look, we got an African American woman right here, with a, right here in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. All right, and she's asking me the question: Why African American men won't even holler at her? And she wasn't ugly. Her whole crew was not ugly. There were some attractive women, but why no African American men? In fact, when they find out that we are from from America, they run the dark to the other side of the street. They get any indication that they're that we're Americans or we speak English or anything like that, they take off running. Okay, why is that? And I, you know, yeah. like I said, I sat there and why? I explained to it. I got I caught a lot of flack right there. I got a lot of guys who are telling me, "Oh man, why would you take all that time out to talk to her? Man, fuck them bitches." No, I want them to see. So maybe I know it's not really going to change much, but maybe they'll go back home and they'll tell their sisters back home, 
okay? And look, we got to step our game up, all right? Because there's a small contingent of black men who are coming you know to... I have no sympathy for them. None. No, there's no, no sympathy for them. You want to know why? Go ahead. Because when I was, with, when I was at um, Christ the Redeemer statue with Al Harper, yeah. we ran into several American sisters who are also at Christ the Redeemer. Uh-huh. So once they heard us speaking English and they started speaking English, they realized that we weren't resistant guys. Uh-huh. All of a sudden, you could see their demeanor change, and we might as well have been in Brooklyn, New York. Oh, not even all the way up it, there. It, I mean, it was almost instant. It was instant. And we looked at each other, and we were like, oh, they're going to play the same game here that we play in the U.S. They realized that we're from the U.S., and I was like, oh. Uh huh. So now I have absolutely no sympathy for them. You get what you get. Well, the thing about it is, when you come, but well, there's a thing. When they come down here, they've been knocked off their pedestal so far, right? That they're wondering, well, oh. why? What's going on? Why? Why can't we get any attention? You know, why no men want to talk to us? Now, keep in mind that when you came down here, that was not that was the off season. Okay, when we had the beach party in November, yeah. that was the on season. So there was a lot more, of course, a lot more females are here from a lot more females are in Brazil during the on season. And it's, it's like the, the best time to come because it's the middle it's winter in the, it's winter in the U S getting start getting cold in the U S and it's starting to get hot, real hot down there, in, down here in Brazil. So yes. a lot of the Americans and the women want to come down here, Christ Redeemer statue, of course, and everything. they want to see all that. But they, what they don't see that this is not a destination to find men. Okay. No. This is a destin. You, you going This is a destination just for the tourism. You are gonna get ignored, the cold shoulder from all men down here. Okay. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You know, unless it's a, you know an opportunistic Brazilian that want to get a green card from you. Okay. Now those are the ones you have to be careful. Okay. You know, but um, the thing about it is down here, they, they so what they do, they tell you all these women here, they want a green card. All these women here, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, basically a concentration of a couple of million Brazilians, Brazilian women, they're all prostitutes, each and every one of them, Okay. Mm-hmm. The type of stuff that they try to throw into your head is because it's an abusive shot back at you. And if you take it, you're fooling yourself. If you believe, I got guys out here yeah. who, who like, oh man, man, I hear, I heard, and I, you know what I feel how I feel about when somebody starts a sentence, a sentence off with I heard. Okay, I heard there's no yeah. prostitutes down there, and I gotta, I say, dude, ask yourself this question. All right. Brazil is, is, is a country the size of the United States. It has 26 other states other than, than Rio. Okay? Tell me. <coughs> Tell me your common sense now. Every single woman is a prostitute down here. Tell me, does that sound realistic? Does that make any sense? Well, who did you hear this from? No. Oh, I heard these girls talking. And I said, then you know what? You done fucked up right there. For one, you don't listen to anything that a woman says. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And then you, but if you really want to find out what's going on here, come on down here. You know, yeah, come on down here. Right. But I'll say one more thing before I go and open up the line. But well, one of the things that guys were telling me about going down to Brazil is that I was going to get kidnapped by oh, hordes of gay and transsexual men. Oh, Lord. Right? <laughs> Funny thing is, the only gay and transsexual people I saw in Rio de Janeiro were from Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> Let me tell you something, man. <laughs> Wait for a second. You, you're going to find... And with that, brother, I'm going to go because there's brothers on the line. Mm-hmm. And, bro, I love you. 
keep doing what you're doing, bro. I'll see you in Rio soon. It might not be in November, but I'll see you in Rio soon. Bro. Try to come down yeah. soon, James. And like I said, I appreciate you. You're another. You're you're the member of um the 1,000 Black Man's Options Patreon members. I really appreciate you for being a Patreon man. You know, it's your it's your type of support that keeps our show alive, man. <laughs> Hey, my, my pleasure, brother. My pleasure. Take it easy, brother. Bye-bye. All right, now. You take care now. Be safe out there. Officer James right there in the house right there. We got another caller coming in from 904. 904, your mic's open. Hello? 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 You're on the line. Hey, how's it going, Charles? Hey, what's going hey, on, money? Hey, I'm on the line? Yes, you are, brother. Hey, yeah, well, I just... My name is Larry, and uh, I uh, I stumbled across uh, your material on YouTube. I was going through uh, Second Divorce, okay, and just like frustrated and just tired of just the treatment that I had experienced myself, and of course that um, I've seen a lot of other people that I know experience. I own a barbershop, okay. So I hear story after oh, yeah. story of people just being dogged out. And then when I see these people, they are subpar with nothing really to bring to the table but want. Yeah. And so after I listened to your videos and listened to your videos and and heard you talk about like Brazil, uh-huh. it sparked an interest in me. And I, I don't know if you remember, but I inboxed you one time and then okay. you responded to me. Okay. And uh, from that point on, man, i just been running with it. And it's so funny because I even talked talk to my mom about the situation. Mm-hmm. And her response was, go. Go to Brazil. Go travel. Do something. See something different. Some Brother, I- I'm going to be real with you. As a result. I'm going to be real with you. Going through two divorces, man, you got really got nothing to lose. Going through two divorces. I said, going through two divorces, you got nothing to lose at this point. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, yeah, man. I mean, I've been losing the house and getting sued for Alabama, all that crazy stuff, man. It's just like, from people that I gave, when they, when, I think the term is hyperbole. When I found them, I picked them up. It wasn't the other way around. Exactly. So it was just a, a crazy, crazy situation, man. And so, uh, as a result, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna come. I know they're the That's my plan. I'm coming, man. And uh, I'm excited about it, man. And I appreciate what you're doing. And I, I haven't done it yet, but I am gonna become a Patreon member tonight. Hey, I appreciate it, man. Like I said, um, you because you know, it's like this, man. Let me tell you something. All right. People say, let's just say this right here. Let's just call for what it is. Let's call a little bit, okay? Let's just say that hypothetically, every every last one of these Brazilian women down here are prostitutes. Hypothetically, okay? All right. Now, ask just what brothers gotta ask themselves is: We are always and forever will be paying for pussy. There is no way around it. All right. Now, you went through two divorces, okay? You know, one divorce was for me. That that was, you know, but you went through two of them. God bless you, all right? Tell me, how much (laughs) money did you lose off of those two divorces? You don't have to give me direct numbers or anything like that, but just tell me from a a, a lot to a little, you know, basic basics. Probably the the first one was probably about 24,000. And the second one, maybe about, uh, about 8000 Well, the bottom line is this. I guess a rough thing. That's a, that's a low the bottom line is this, right? You said that these chicks came in with nothing, but they're going out with something. That right there is the proof right there that we will always pay for the pussy. And the problem, the thing about it is, right, all right the question is, we're always going to be paying for the pussy. The question is, how much are you going to pay? You come yep. down here in Brazil and, and pay for a piece of ass for about what, uh, fifty bucks, or or um or a hundred bucks or something like that. Get that get that nice piece of ass, girl. Fuck you all night, make you feel good, even cook you cook you breakfast in the morning, and you know, and hi and goodbye after that. Maybe to the next time we get together. All right, or you can go and marry an American woman. All right. You know, because you wanted to get that booty, all right? 
and then things don't work out, she goes, put you in child support, if you have kids together, drain you for the next 20, 18 years, or, or put you on alimony and drain you for the next God knows how many years from there, too. In fact, that's going to be money where you won't be getting any pussy. Okay? You still paying money for pussy that you ain't even getting. <laughs> So that's where brothers got to start. Really, got to start breaking it down. When brothers come out to them and say, "Oh man, these but the prostitutes down there." You know, well, shucks, well, aren't you? Aren't you more of a, along the lines prostitution too? The law. The reason why it's not called prostitution is because the law stands behind it. it but it's still in my eyes prostitution. Okay. Yeah, it is. Because you coming in with nothing, but you going out with something. You coming in with pussy, but you going out with money. And then maybe getting more money without even giving up pussy. That's a damn good hustle right there. But that only works in America. It only works in westernized societies like America and the UK. You know? And that's where brothers got to realize when the world come at you with that stupid shit, you come back at them with the same breakdown mentality. <laughs> okay. You know, it's not about... I'm going to say this right now. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, go ahead. It's a break in the line. I apologize. Well, like I said, it's, it's just a standard breakdown mentality. You know, how much you're going to, it's not about how much pussy you're going to get. It's about how much money you're going to throw out. And no pussy in the world is free. We go, we go with what you about to say. Yeah, I was about to say, I remember uh, when I inboxed you, you had inboxed me uh, uh, a dating website. I think it was called Brazilian, matter of fact, it is. It's called BrazilianKeeper.com. Yeah. Uh -huh. man, man, when I tell you, it's like five to six out of every ten was like, 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 like short stoppers, man. It was, like, it was like, it was crazy. Like, I, I didn't believe it. Yeah. And so I finally, I met a few people on there. So one that I've been dialoguing with had who I look forward to seeing in November. And, and I'm telling you, man, I just I feel bad for brothers, man, that don't know about this. You know what I'm saying? So I try to tell everybody that I know, at least people that come in my barbershop, so I have that connection with. Mm -hmm. But, uh, man, you're doing something good, brother. And I, I'm just, I just want to say keep it up, man. Well, most, like I said, most definitely, man, it's, it's, it's about, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm giving out awareness, man. All right, I'm giving out awareness so brothers can, won't have to be putting their heads down thinking that this is their only existence in the matrix. All right? And when a lot of brothers hear that, it turns them around. And, you know, and like I said, all I asked them to do, like I said, we're having a real big event come November. It's going to be a two-part event, all right, in November, okay? So you may want to extend yourself out to about at least two weeks or more, all right? When we have these beach parties in November, all right, it's a chance for brothers who are coming down here who, well, man, I don't, I, I don't want to come down there by myself or this and this and this and that, right? I'm, you come on down here, you, you're you going to be surrounded by brothers who you probably already knew through our Facebook group, Afro-American Men versus Brazilian Women Would You Date, and, and Women Abroad Would You Date, you know. And you're going to be coming across people you probably talk, uh, talk to on, you know, in the Facebook group or made posts with and all this other stuff. And then, then now you get to see, all right, what's going on down here. All right. You know, you know, we got, like, of course, the legendary Mr. John Thompson. All right. We got the, um, the black jet setter himself, Alvin Harper. All right, who's going to be handling the tours and the parties and stuff like that. There's going to be a lot of things going on this year. And I employ everybody who's listening on the show, if you haven't been to any of our beach parties in November, this is the one to come to. All right, because you're going to come down here, you're going to be seeing women, you're going to be dealing with women down here. I always suggest for anybody who's using the dating site, or um, a Brazilian Cupid, um... I'm going to say a couple of things. If, you know, you're not going to find a wife in one week. Okay? All right? I will say that. Now, it's a start. Okay? It's a start. I will say that. But you want to come down here. You want to get online with a chick at least one to two months before you come. 
Brazilian women, they get very, very impatient. You tell them that you're coming down here six or seven months from now, that's going to piss them off. She's already looking at the next dude. All right. But when you come, oh, I'll be there within two months or something like that, then you give them something to look forward to. You know, but yeah, Brazilian Cube is a good start with, man. And, you know, you come on down here, you have a good time. And I guarantee you'll be back. I mean, like I said, I got a couple of guys. Guy who came down here um, for our beach party in 2015. He's been back 10 times since. Okay. Wow. Staying anywhere between two weeks to two months. You know. So once he gets, once you get a taste, man, it, it, it's over. You coming back? You know. And I, hey, you know, I, I tell brothers all the time, like, chick that y'all saw me uh, in my arms today, all right, or the chick that y'all saw me hollering at on the beach last, or two weeks ago, okay, that's the norm, man. Okay? And they're the ones that told, those girls told me to come over to them. Okay? Wow. You know, I'm walking up, I'm walking, I'm walking along the side, you know, doing my walk on the beach every day, every, every morning, and they pulled me aside. Okay. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, so that's how, that's how easy it is, man. But you got to get on the airplane. You got to fit, you got to give it a try. You know, you gotta give, uh, where are you calling from the day tonight anyway, man? I'm, nine old, I'm trying to figure out what 904 is. Uh, Jacksonville, Jacksonville said, Florida. Oh, man. Oh, let me tell you something. You got it even better, man. Because last, last year, we had 30 guys come. About 30-some guys came down last year for the beach party. And the reason why that number was low, in my opinion, is because we had outrageous airline fees. I'm talking about. It's the highest airline fees I've ever seen. Seventeen hundred dollars, you know, sixteen hundred and all this other stuff. You know, I know one guy almost paid two grand. Right? But wow. you but you you live right there. I think the prices will fall. But if you can get over to Fort Lauderdale or get over to Miami, I guarantee you you'll fly out for about six fifty round trip. Yeah, I uh, spiced something, and it was uh, 747 round trip, but you need to Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> mm -hmm. And Fort Lauderdale takes you to Columbia, and then Columbia takes you to Brazil. That sounds like Avianca. That sounds like yeah, a... Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, I think, right. it is. Yeah, that it sounds is. like Avianca, because I did that one time myself. I took Avianca to get here. Um, I flew down from New... Um, I flew out from Philadelphia down to Miami. I took out the anchor from there. Yep. Yep. So, yeah. Well, you can try that route, too. That would probably work better for you. And, you know, like I said, man, come on down there. You'll be a first-timer. You come on down to this beach party, man. You're going to be surrounded by all the brothers down here, including myself, man. It's going to be one, one hell of a party, man. And go get maybe get yourself a nice little sweetheart. You know what I'm saying? No, I was going to say, I look forward to it. We'll definitely be in touch, obviously, you know, being on the page and just kind of keeping up with what's going on and obviously getting the information. So I, I definitely look forward to it, man. I'm going to go ahead and try to make my stuff uh, solid at least by the middle of next month. So so I should be locked in. This will be the best time to do it while the rates are low, everything like that. The least, I would say the next three months, all right, this will be the best time to start getting your – um. To start getting things together now. Look, if you're looking for, if you're looking for more information about the beach party and everything like that, I would like you to get in contact with me. Anyone out there get in contact with me or Alan Harper. Okay. You know, we also gonna have a follow up with Mr. John Thompson too as well. All right. But right now, okay. uh, Alan Harper okay. is one of my admin. Get directly in contact with him. He's running Black Jet Setters. We got some um, new information that's going to be coming out for the beach party. It's a whole nine. Okay? Okay. 
All well, right. Well, I'm going to get out of the way, man. I, I, uh, again, I look forward to, uh, you know, uh, staying in contact, man, and, you know, getting the information, man. And uh, you guys, man, y'all have a good night, man. Thanks again, man, for what you do. I appreciate it. Anytime, brother, man. Thanks for your call, man. Really appreciate it. Yes, sir. All right, Larry. Take care. All right. Like I said, man, it's, it's you know, you, um, it's about getting away. It's about trying something new. And I think that's what a lot of brothers are afraid of doing. It's always that fear of the unknown. And take it from me. I know. All right. I found every excuse to get out of going to Brazil when I decided I wanted to come down here. I was looking for an excuse. I was like a lot of y'all brothers out here. Oh, they're going to do this and that to me. All oh, the women are all prostitutes. Oh, I'm going to run into a transvestite. This and all this other stupid shit, you know. But I did not allow fear to lock me into a situation that's not going to change. All right, we got another call coming in from the 626. 626, your mic is open. Hey, it's Marcus. What's up? What's going on, Marcus? How you feeling, brother? Man, how are you feeling, man? Oh man, last week I wasn't doing so fine, but I'm doing fine now. I mean, I just, you put it like this, man. This is actually, I lost my voice for about a good four or five days. I'm not sure if anybody was, was uh, I don't think anybody heard me anywhere, you know, but anybody who probably called me directly or something like that. I was talking like that. You know? If you can hear me, I'm good. My voice was gone, man. I thought it was just a bad, you know, internet thing, you know. Nah, man. It was, that was me. I remember the last one I saw when you did with Mr. John. I figured, you know, the whole connection was maybe, you know, weak and you just kind of grew up or like, I'm glad you're back on the feet, man. I, I, I just wanted to call. I was probably that today, man. I want to make sure that, that um, I heard one of your Facebook lives the other day. I think you said now it's 17th or 25th. Yeah, we now there might be another change. Okay, there might be another change. I will say All that. Right. All right, I'm going to be getting new dates. See, like I said, this thing keeps changing. You know, right now we're in the process of getting everything together. So the dates will change. So I have I have to flip this thing again a little bit more. All right. Um, be on. All I can say is be on the lookout for the new date changes and everything like that because um, um, we're expanding this. That's the reason why all this is going on. We're expanding. My goal is to outdo all my past beach parties that I've done had. I've had about four of them. I'm trying to outdo every year. I try to outdo the last one. And this one's being it's expanded. Your way, man. Huh? The black check slave right there. I'm interested in that. Um, I, I see his uh, demo or his um, promo. Yeah. Face, see, that's the reason man, why we have wow. a... Yeah, that's the reason why we have a lot of changes because now with Black Jet Setters is now also in the play, you know, and we're going to be having packages. Black Jet Setters is going to be required packages. All right? And... Those packages, right? You, you know, they can, you know, they could, you know, to get a first come first serve basis. All right, you know, there's going to be a deposit required and everything like that, and we're going to be giving out prices for these packages that we're going to have with Black Jet Setters. All right, now as you can see, um, there's a. If you want to find out how Black Jet Setters are, you can get in contact with former um clients like Officer James Dooley. You know, and a couple of other brothers from New York. And, I mean, in fact, if you've seen our other pictures earlier, we had a bunch of other brothers who came down here from California and everything like that who went through Black Jet Setters, and they were straight now. So there are packages, you know, tours and all this stuff. In fact, right now, Alan is taking a couple of guys out tonight. I'm going to do everything. I'm going to do everything except for that hang gliding or whatever it's called. Hang gliding. <laughs> Okay. I'm not. I'm not ready for that yet. <laughs> I, I I'm not ready for it either. Okay. I, I'm not. My, I don't think they'll be able to fit my big ass on that thing. I'm going to, have to skip that one. I've, I've already skipped it, you know. But I'll, <laughs> there's, a, there's a rich part of me that wants to try it, but it's my, on that tour to do it. But I, I'm not about to be up like that. Not 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 yet. 
I, I right now my weight, I have a weight restriction. I go up there, they'll tell me no in a heartbeat. Okay, you ain't dragging just as soon as I get on that jaw, my that that glider goes straight down. Boom. Okay, no way. I'm. I'll probably lose about another hundred pounds. I'll give it a try. Okay. Well, I, I'm I'm going to this to see the face, man. So I, I was extremely happy. When I was looking at the ticket today, I'm thinking I'm trying to work around the point. So I was going to look at the day before the letter today, like November 9th, stay the 24th. That way, no matter what, it will change the well, see, theory, it, I'm off, I'm just, the good part about it is that you're also you're also going to be a, um when you if you stay that route right we can also catch of course the, um you know, the John our John the other part of the, um, the beach party John you know of course the one we doing me and me and Miss John are doing all right and you'll be able to come to that too as well all right especially with those dates right there you'll cover both of those yeah, dates that's right one there. Of the reasons I want to come back. I wanted to come at least a week early, you know, because uh, last time I had so many snafus, I had to pay for it. In terms of my teeth, they got tested and whatnot. This time, it's clear sailing. I'm going to do it now, buy my thousands. Well, well I'll tell you it's what. It's already coming down. Okay? Well, yeah, the prices are starting to come down. They're going to come down more. That's why I'm telling brothers. Yeah, that's why I'm telling brothers to get in to get in now, at least to get in within the next three months. Start looking to get their um, airline tickets. The biggest hurdle is the airline tickets. I'll tell you that right now. You get past the airline tickets, everything else, room and board and all that stuff, tourism, all that stuff starts to become pretty much cheap. You get it past the airline ticket. You get it. You've been there six weeks now, right? You've been there forty-five days or more. Well, actually, I've been there about I've been here about two, two, almost two and a half months. Oh, God bless you. So, I, my, my last question I was going. I was wondering. So, what have you heard about them looking up the visa requirement? Okay, now that's still in their um their courts right now. But I'll tell you this right now. But you know what's causing, I guess, the, the you know the hold up is because the government. You know we got Donald Trump Jr. down here, their president, and he got caught and red-handed. All right, and they're trying to impeach him now. And I think that's the reason why everything else is being held up because of the, what's going on with the president. Okay, so I think. It was, the only reason I asked you was your boots on the ground. You actually lived there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing about it is, I believe this situation, that the the, um, the visa situation, will be all straightened out probably within the next. I, I, don't quote me now, but within the next three months, I would love to see it straighten out within the next three months before the beach party because that will make life a whole lot easier. And the reason why I think it's going to be straightened out in the next three months. Is because Brazil's tour season is starting to come back up again. All right, it will be coming back up okay. right after um, August, around August or September, and you know Brazil's got too much competition as far as tourism. And the one, as, you know, they they're in market for the American market, and if they can eliminate the tour, the visa situation. Then they'll get more Americans coming down here. More Americans will be coming down here by the thousands, and that helps their economy. So you recommend, in the meantime, you recommend getting that continuing visa. We still get the visa in the meanwhile. We don't know what's going to happen. It's better be safe than sorry. Get the visa. No doubt, no doubt. You know. All right, man. I'll just let you do well. Again, we'll keep the time for today. Then I'll just look at the smile on the well, so I was happy for you because you were stressed out. You had to make two or three delays to lie down, and now you're there. So you know, it's, it's we all want you to do well, man. You know, so well, I'll it's, tell it's, you, you know, everything. So. Well, well, I'll tell you what, man. I, I appreciate what you. I appreciate that, man. I also want to thank you for being a um a one thousand um black man's option Patreon. Oh, it ain't no thing, man. You know, like I said, it's because no it, it's because support like you makes it makes me bring shows like this keep going. Probably something that was one of the 
time and they they need to see their food in the ground. Yeah. Well, like I said, well, like I said, when it's, it's when it's supportive brothers like you that support the show, all right, and everything like that, it makes it that much easier for me to bring show, you know, brothers all over the all over our all over our, all over the country and even all over the world. Yeah, but it shows like it just gives me opportunity to show brothers all over the world that this situation don't have to remain the same. They can find the black man's option, all right. And all they need to do is just get a passport and get an airline ticket and find out what the world world what the real world has to say, you know. And all uh, man, it's brothers like you that help me do this. Brothers like you and um, um, Officer James Dooley and everything like that that helps us get this thing going. He's an inspiration, man. It's like you can hear any voice. Well, let me tell you something, James. You know, like I said, I'm 44 years old, okay? All right? And when you get up here, you know this. You and I are the same age bracket somewhere in the ballpark, right? And you know that when you get to a certain age, it's time for you to do different things, okay? You know, it's time for you to start dealing with different types of women. And all. I'm not dead yet. Okay? And I'm not going to be dead anytime soon. Okay? It's just a fact that what you say is true because Dwayne Banks, I'm not the kind of here in the pharmacy, he didn't seem to that um, the nation on that last year now. I've met people from all over the world, which means I'm going to LA. They live here, but they tell me the same thing. They say, you should just go to the country. All kinds of things. And some of them work here, some of them are married, some are single, but they say, these are people who are seeing the thing in the middle. You just got to go there, see for yourself, don't leave all the roofers. You know, everybody's out not to get you. It's just like, it's like this, in the book of the If you can survive in any city in America, she doesn't say the swamp, she doesn't say the that's why I told you, basic street smarts. Well, man. Basic street smarts. Oh, man. You don't go down there to the floss and shit, man. All, all, all your all change showing you what the flash of money. I mean, oh, you wouldn't do that here. So why don't you go down there? Yeah. Mm hmm. Exactly. You don't go where you don't act like. It's like. I, I don't want to hold up the line and say, I just want to say, big red and black. I don't think you'll be able to be the happiest song that I can offer. The job scheme, you know, I'll be able to do it. I'm there for November. They do that. Well, Marcus, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate your call, too, man. No problem, man. There's no problem, man. Miss the show, man. It's awesome. Well, man, like I said, keep the support coming, and we can keep doing more shows, and I'll do more videos from here on out. We can definitely go. We're also live. We're doing live records on YouTube as well right now as well. And, you know, you know, anybody out there want to go send a text to our Facebook group and ask for a question, we can keep it going. And all, you know. But I really appreciate your call. Really, really, really appreciate your call there, Marcus. You know, all right there, Mr. Love. Okay, we're going. Um, like I said, um, I definitely want to keep doing these shows. As as um, we um, we uh, mentioned earlier, we reached our last our last show that we did right before the um, NBA Finals was our one hundredth show. Now, when I started doing these shows. V, when have we started doing this? Back in 2014? Well, that 2014 when we got started. You know, I, you, 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 if you can, if you can definitely pinpoint, I'm going to say 2014. All right, 2014, 2015, somewhere around there. All right, now we at our 100, 100 um, one, sh one show now. All right, I never thought that we got this far. And I would like to do more shows. I would like to do more videos. 
but with me living down here in Brazil, it's got a little bit more complicated than me living back in the States. You know, we deal with a much weaker infrastructure as far as internet and communication and everything like that. You know, but with our viewer support, listener support, all right, we can definitely keep these shows coming weekly. And I like, like I said earlier, I want to start doing the Charles Tyler um, shows on YouTube. I want to start doing them live on location all over Brazil. All right. But we need about at least a thousand Patreons at $5 a pop. All right. I can pay $5 a month. All right. To keep the Charles Tyler show going and keep the Charles Tyler show growing. All right. And that money, not just that type of growth that we would um, support in black cultural media will not just go to just the Charles Tyler show, it also go to other opportunities that I've been trying to do for years, like um, set up um, raffles to bring brothers to Brazil, at least one or two brothers a month to Brazil. All right, all expense paid one one week uh, one week trip to Brazil, and they all got to be Patreons, okay, in order for us to do that. You know, that's a that's exclusive. That that raffle will be exclusively for Patreons only, just for five dollars a month. So if you want to become a Patreon member, a, a thousand Black Man's Options Patreon member, all right, you can become a Patreon at Patreon.com forward slash C T Y L E R S H O W. Okay. All right. I'm going to say that again. Patreon.com forward slash C Tyler T Y L E R S H O W. All right. Five dollars. Become a Patreon today. Keep the Charles Tyler show going. YouTube has cut us off. Okay, as far as um, ad revenues. All right. So the Charles Tyler show now has to be listener funded and view funded. Okay, and it's the best way to do it. Only five dollars per month to make it happen. All right, there, V. I would like to go on to our next caller. We have any callers in the line? Or? Hold on one second here. Let's see if we still got on here. All right. Give us one minute. And also to our listeners out here, if you um you want to send a text to me on the Facebook group. You can send a text directly to me if you want to ask a question directly on the Facebook group. And see, uh, we can definitely take your... Um... There we go. Hold on a second. V, you online with me? Hold on one second here. V, can you, okay, V. Okay. We still got a little tech. Like I said, when we're dealing from long distance here, we got to deal with these technical uh, difficulties here. Let me go. I got to send another message to V here. V, can you hear me? All right, we might have been disconnected out there. Hold on one second. You still with me, V? Give me one second here, fellas. Okay. Oh, boy. Hold on one second. V. 
That's what happens when you, you, your producer's 6,000 miles away from you. <laughs> and we got to do everything via voice over IP. Let's see here. Okay. All right. Okay, we have a little hold up here. Give me one. Give us a few minutes. We have a little technical difficulties. Okay, we got some technical difficulties here. Please stand by. Can you hear me? I think his mic might be down. We are down until he comes back up. Hold on one second. Okay. While we're waiting for V to come back on, if all my listeners out here, um, if you want to um, send me a direct text via Facebook, all right, you're going to know for, for all my Facebook members and all my Facebook friends list, you can send it to also all through our, through our um, Facebook group, Afro-American Men. Uh, versus Brazilian women and women abroad. You can also send me questions off of that group as well. Um, we're waiting for V um, to get back online here. All right, we got a little technical difficulties. Hopefully, we're getting back on in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. And because uh, that we're that's uh, holding up our phone call part of the deal there for our, for our, our and also our um our listeners online. Please continue to hold. We'll get you back yeah. on. Hopefully, get you in before we you know we still got about a good for 45 minutes left in the show. All right. And um, if you want to get in on this call, please press one to unmute yourself. All right. We got a lot of listeners in and all. And just as soon as we can get connected with V, we can get going again here. So please hold tight. V, are you up? Oh, boy. <laughs> Q. 
crochet hold tight here Okay, what we might have to do is I might have to temporarily I'll put the show on hold for about um, for about five minutes, okay? Um, so uh, please stay tuned. Okay, let me just get give V a chance to get back online here. We got a lot of calls held up in the queue here. So let me go and see if I can um give him a direct call and see if I can get find out. He might have a, a disconnect on his end. So I'm gonna shut down the show temporarily. All right, so please hold on. We'll be back in five minutes. Leave your message for two two zero two two eight zero five.
Yeah, we're back on now. Yeah, you hear me? Okay. Can you hear me? Um, okay, Pete, we got a little technical difficulties here. I'm going to play a musical interlude while we try to get Charles back into the studio. Okay, we have a little technical difficulties here. We're trying to connect back to Washington there. You know, just bear with us real quick. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, 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 we got you. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Okay, we got Charles here. Yeah, we're back online here. Yeah, 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 we're back on. Let me go to Harry Coach. Six one. Hey, hey. Six oh one. Sorry for the delay, my brother. How you feeling? Good, good. All right, man. So what's yeah. yeah, here we can hear you loud and clear. Oh, I, I didn't know I, I didn't know I was live. Uh, my name is Candle calling from uh calling from Baltimore, Maryland. What's going on, B more? How you feeling? Man, I'm feeling I'm feeling good, feeling inspired after listening to you guys and uh, you know, get a chance to Look over the comments and see how y'all encouraging up don't get each other, you know, especially dealing with, you know, some of these females in the matrix. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm thirty three years old, you know, I'm a real estate investor. And uh, I just realized that there's a lot of females out here these days that listen to these reality shows and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And they their mind is all warped. It's, it's, it's just out of control and I'm just looking for uh, a new experience somebody that's real, you know. So I figured, hey, why not take my talents overseas? There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong nothing with trying. Know, like, There's nothing wrong with trying something new, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I can see it, yeah. There's nothing wrong with trying, yeah. some, trying something new, man. You know. Absolutely, definitely. Um, I did. Actually, I, I did have a question. Um, with, um, you know, it's going to be my, like, my first time trying to uh, go to Brazil. I, I, I plan to try to make the November trip. Uh -huh. I'm Lord willing. Um, <clears throat> so I just want to, you know, just get some tips and advice on, you know, for first time goers. Okay. Well, okay. Well, what, what type of tips would you start off with? Or do you want me to put it all in on you? Uh, better to get I said, well, all right, I'm going to start off with my first tip is this, right, is come, before we get into the, the you know, the, the, the dips and don't, you know, the dips and the do nots and all that stuff, right, start off coming down there with an open mind. Come down here, don't come down here with okay. high expectations, all right, all right, all right, don't come down here looking for a girlfriend right off the bat. 
right? No. All right, you come down here and have a good time. All right? All the rest of that stuff will come in time. All right? Come down here, have a good time, and come down here with an open, most of all, come down here with an open mind. All right? Okay. And when you start, right. you know, because therefore, when you come down here, you come down here, you have a good time, you never know what's going to, what's going to come your way. But when you come down here with expectations, and those expectations are not fulfilled, you're going to come, you're going to be disappointed. Okay. Well, I, I, I definitely, I definitely understand that. Okay. Now, as as far as the dip, the you know the, the do's and the do nots. Well, you know it's like this. We come in, you come on over to a foreign country, especially over here. You still got to bring your street smarts, all right? Right. You know, you know certain places you're not supposed to be at. But like I said, we're gonna be having so many tours and all this other stuff. You get to go to the certain places that you're not supposed to be at. At least you'll be safe. Okay. At all, you know. Okay. Um. What else here? You know, you come down here. I'm pretty sure that you're a well-groomed, well-cut young man. All right. I bet. I, you know, I could tell. All right. Make sure you stay that way when you come down here. Cause these women. One thing that drives these Brazilian women crazy is a man that does not stink. In fact, when they, if, if, all right, if a man that, and not just that, they, the guys who wear their cologne, guys who, 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 um, who care about how they look and how they dress and everything like that, that drives them crazy. You don't have to come down and dress in GQ style and everything like that, but basic, you know, polo shirts. All that stuff, they love that. You know? Okay. You don't have to dress the, you know, like you're going to a fashion show. You know, I get, I, hey, man, I get along a whole lot well with my um and one shorts. Okay? Right. You know, so. I was told, I was told the man makes the clothes anyway. Well, like I said, man, you know, you come down here, you look at me, you dress, you, you smell well, and you're looking all good. They'll, they'll take you, they'll take you a very long way. And then you come down and you act like a gentleman. Don't come down here acting like an asshole. Okay. All right. You know, don't don't bring the matrix mindset down here. They don't like that. Um, oh, and most of, and the other main thing I can tell you is this: believe that American. And take this from me, because I didn't do it when I first came down here, and I almost got into a lot of trouble. Leave that American pride bullshit alone. Leave that American pride. I'm an American. I'm superior than you, and you're you're poor, and this and that. No, leave that shit alone. Because these women, especially these women, they will check you on it quick. You'll find a you find a drink thrown in your face so fast, it ain't even funny. Okay. I see. I remember this. this uh, right. I remember this uh, German million. Uh, this uh, German millionaire came down here, thought because he was had all these euros and he could talk any shit to any of these women. Man, the dude was we getting a drink thrown in his face one time after another. All right. Any one girl just went as far as not only throw a drink in his face, she slapped the shit out of him too. Okay. You know. But he deserved it. Right. He, he came down there that I'm be I'm more superior. I'm be, you're poor and and this and that and they and it went the wrong way. Okay. I'm so, right, I'm right. so that's to me that's my best advice for you first timers. All right, and it mainly comes from that first tip that I gave you. All right. If anything, remember that right. one. You know. Right. It'll take you a long way and you'll get a whole lot of women. <laughs> That's what's up, man. I'm just trying to live life and uh, enjoy it to the best of my abilities while I'm still young. You're still young, uh, man. Just, just one more short question. Uh, uh, just one more short question. Um, I don't know if any of the guys in the group are into like mixed martial arts, like Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, mm -hmm. but I just wanted to uh, get an idea of some... Um, 
you know, possibly good gems off of your practice. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. They're all over the place. You get down here. You get down here, I'll point you out a couple. They're all over the place. There's one, in fact, right around the corner from where I live at right now. A Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu gym. Oh, nice. Yeah, they're all over the place. You know, that, yeah, man, that's, my, that's my thing right there. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, you, you, you'll find it. Yeah, man, like, I appreciate you, brothers, man. Like, I'm just a theater listening to the show. Um, I love what you're doing, you know, giving people, uh, giving our brothers, you know, a, a different outlet, a different alternative, a different outlook on life. You know, meaning that you don't have to settle for the status quo. You can go out here and, you know, create your own perfect environment. That's what I like. Well, man, that's what we that's what we're trying to you know build, man. We're trying to build brothers up, not tear brothers down, man. You know. Right. You know, we get enough of that in the yeah, matrix, okay. man. We get enough of that. Oh, in yeah. the... one, 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 one little, I was gonna say one little thing before I go uh, to the fellas out there. You know, that's probably you know looking look, looking to live. Um, look into our uh, real estate, our uh, real estate investment. You know, real estate wholesaling. You can do it. You know, just from a laptop and a phone. Um, I actually grow right now and on a Greyhound bus with just the internet. So it can be done anywhere in the world. You know, have your money wired to you. You know, you can live the life you want to live just from the um, from the company your own home on a computer. So that's something you know the fellas can look into to bring in some passive income while they live in abroad. That's a good thing, yo. That's a good thing to get involved in. Maybe later on this week, you PM me, give me some more information on that. All right, not a problem. I'll I'll, I'll have some links in the Facebook group, so you know, just get an idea uh, of what, what's in detail and everything like that. I can go ahead and get that open. Sure. Okay, we'll take a look at them. All right, man. I appreciate you, brothers, man. Stay safe, man. Anytime, man. Stay. You can't wait to get you down there, man. Like I said, if you want more information about the beach party and all that stuff, get in contact, of course, with um, either me or Alan Harper. I'll also put you in contact with Mr. John Thompson, too, too, as well, okay? All right, sure will, man. Appreciate it. All right, there, brother. Peace out. All right. All right, all right man. Oh, anytime, anytime. All right, sorry about the um, our temporary uh, disconnection right here. Like I said, we're dealing with, we're about, you know, from producer to uh, talker, we're about 5,000 miles apart, okay? And we're doing everything through the Internet and everything, so you know when these type of situations happen, it causes a delay. All right, um, we're just going to move on to our next caller. V, what is our next caller following up? I know we're backed up because of that. We've got about uh, 18 minutes left, and we got open lines, so uh, we, we got plenty of people in the studio. Press one, and we'll get you on. We can probably take a minute, I guess, maybe two and callers. So anybody who's in the studio, would, uh, you know what? Uh, uh, and we got a bunch of people, a record from Australia. He hasn't pressed one yet, though. So once again, if you're in a studio, which we got a number of people who are, and you want to get on, you got about 17 minutes left. Press one right now. Any other people call uh, 773 um, 897 6277. But like I said, we got a number of people already. And they're in the studio, just press one. Okay. Other than that, while we're waiting for people to press one, um, Charles, uh, well, now you've recovered. Um, uh, what's your typical day like in Brazil, man? Well, you know, like I say, you know, my, my thing is like this. I start off by trying to walk the beach, man. All right. You know, where we live at, the beaches are filthy. Okay. So, I mean, these people out here, this is the winter time. They, what, what they considered the winter time, and they're out on the beach, jumping in the ocean. Okay, so it's still about yeah, about 70, 80 degrees, 75, 80 degrees down here. You know, and they consider that cold. I'm seeing these people walking around with coats on and stuff like that. I'm like, really? You know? So 
you know, me myself, I'm trying to lose this weight. I'll walk about at least two miles up and down the beach a day. You know. Okay. And you know, you never know who you run into. Women out here, you know, they, mm -hmm. they you know, they, you run into women left and right, you know, and these women in these bikinis out here, Jesus Lord, you know. So, you know. So, this, like I said, this is the 101st podcast you've done here on Blog Talk. Now, let's go back to the early days of the Charles Sauer Show here, where he used to give people the basics, because uh, we got new listeners, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. uh, basic advice for people that it's Friday night here in the United States, and some people might want to be out on a date. Somebody, people might be listening that came back from a bad date. It's still advice for people that want to explore other opportunities outside the USA. But well, see, the, the thing about being down here, right, is that every night could be a date night. All okay? right. Any time could be a date night. It could be a date. I mean, there's so many women out here, you know, and. And they all and they all coming at you, you know. And I haven't really had a down here. I haven't really had any bad dates. <coughs> you know, I've had women who once they get you, they're gonna try to stake claim on you. All right, and that's where you know I had to go. Oh wait a second, baby, I didn't say we in a relationship. <laughs> you know, you know. Just take it easy, you know, slow your roll, you know, we'll get to it, you know, but, you know, to me, down here is so many women that if you go out on a bad, let's just say you go out on a bad date, you can end that date ASAP and go get yourself another woman real quick and try to wind up on a good date, all right? I know all about that bad dating stuff back in the Matrix. I done had a lot of them, okay? And, you know, when you have a bad date, you have that, that, that sign of disappointment. Like, damn, I was really hoping this would work out. This girl looked cute, but now she acting like a bitch, you know? Down here, you don't, it's so many women that you don't have time to be in a negative situation. It's like, oh, well, you know, you don't like me? All right, no problem, baby. You know, I, you know, I wish you well. Bye. You know? You know? I'll, I'll get you an Uber, get you on home, you know? That's it. You know, why? She, well, I got to get an Uber to get on home. I'm already on the phone with the next girl. Okay? Yeah, babe, I need you to come through tonight. Yeah, okay. You know? Yeah, I had a little rough, a little rough night tonight, but I want you to make me feel better. You know, that's the way it is down here, man. And if you see, you see guys like me and Alan Harper and and Raphael Poland, you see us. You you, you know, you even see you, you see the smile on the faces because that smile that y'all see on our faces, that's called the edge. Okay, we got the edge. Okay. And because and we and we only got the edge not because we are better than anybody else, not because our our dicks might be bigger than anybody else. All right, no, that's not it. The edge is being here. Okay, all right, just being here. You know, that's the edge. All right, now with you being in this country and everything like that. The women are vast. There's so many types of women out here that I don't even hold myself to just black women at times, too. I also mess with the indigenous Indians. I also mess with the, you know, the Latino indigenous Indians, you know, and all that, and even some of the white chicks, too. Okay? Or what they prefer, I mean, what they see as white. I don't see them as white. I see them as Latino. You know, which in my opinion, is still black. Okay? You know, so, you know, it's a good feeling to be down here. The stress is off you. You know, so, I mean, that's the way I look at it. 
you know. Hey, some guys have, um, how many guys have, uh, she got the, the move, how many guys have moved down there? And I think it's some of them got married, haven't they? All right, well, so far, I know um, Dwayne Banks is still down here. He's been married. He's been down here about two and a half years. All right, Philly McFly Harris, he's been down here even longer, you know, going on almost three years. And he's He got married, and he's he married a, a big-time winner, you know. In fact, you, you can see a, a video, uh, for, for the people who don't know uh, Philly McFly Harris, you can see a video, a video of um, him. Me interviewing him and his wife, you know, a very beautiful um, young lady by the name of Jana, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, who else? Um, of course, Alvin's down here, but he's not married, you know, yet at least. I don't know. Um, you know, and some guy who wrote a book. Oh, uh, professor. I think he's, he's been down there for a minute too. Yeah, he's been down here twelve years. Professor, um, professor, um, uh, Turner. Professor Turner, he's up there in Salvador, and he's been down there. And he wrote a book, uh, you know, and you know, you can find a book on our YouTube channel too as well. All right, and you know how to approach Brazilian women, this and that, and all that stuff. He's is. He's uh, he's been down here twelve years. He's been he's been married to as well. He's been doing he's doing very well himself. And it, like I said, it's it, and these guys. They're, and these guys, you know, some of these guys I mentioned, you know, they're a little older than I am, and they, you know, they're living their lives down here. Some of these guys are younger than me that I mentioned, and they gotten younger. Instead of older, the, being out the matrix, one thing I can say, aside from the women, because it always seems we come back to the women, but I'll, I'll go beyond the women. You know, it's about self-preservation. Okay, it's about living longer. All right, I'm not about growing up with diabetes or 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 um, you know health um, heart disease and all this other stuff at age forty something and falling out dead. Okay, I'm not about that. Since I've been down here, I've been eating more healthier. Okay, I've been, um, like I said, walking almost anywhere between one to two miles a day. My legs are stronger. Okay, from all the ACL injuries that I've had, um, surgeries that I've had. All right, and you know, I'm feeling good about myself. And feel, and that is a lot, because that's less stress. And stress is what's been killing a lot of these young black men out here, you know, in the matrix. You know. So that is my thing and my swerve about being down here. Okay. So like I said, man, I just want to, you know, keep it going. Right. Well, we've got about eight minutes left, Charles, and now we we'll still got people in the studio. Press one. All right, we got open lines. We got some bashful people, man. I guess. Well, I, uh, press yeah. one. Yeah, to more. get in on the last, we got seven minutes of live stream left. Press one, ladies. And oh, let me bring this up. I forgot to bring it up. I had to be on the podcast. Um. I checked the stats before the uh, the program tonight. Lately, 80% of the people who listen to the Charles Tyler show, now it's, 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 the show is downloaded globally. You got listeners in uh, China, Russia, Australia, South Korea, four countries in Africa, um, a good portion of Europe. Uh, you're in, in South America, you heard naturally in Brazil, uh, Argentina, and Colombia. And of course, a number of the United States. So, but out of all those countries, and a lot that I didn't name, 80% prior to the program tonight, 80% of the people who've been listening to the Charles Taylor program, mostly through downloads, 
are women. However, women are rare for some reason to punch one. So ladies, we got, I mean, anybody can punch one, but uh, we had seven minutes left. Mm -hmm. Press one, whether you're a man or a woman, ladies, we definitely would like to hear from you. That's surprising. Because we know you listen. That's surprising. I would like to get more women, more women callers to call up than just listen, you know, because we want to hear your opinion too as well. We want to see how we can even maybe even fix a lot of our is issues through talking and through debating and stuff like that. That is definitely something that, you know, I would like to see get a lot of our women listeners to become women callers too as well, you know. Because they're in the Facebook group too. Oh, yeah. They've been in the Facebook group, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not, like I said, I'm not like, a guy that just rejects women from not from joining my group and everything like that. I want my group, my groups to become more worldly anyway and more accepting to all both sides of the spectrum of sex, you know, because so we can get a better understanding of each other, all right, and why black men do what they do and why black women do what they do. You know, at the end, at the end of the day, we're still sisters and brothers and we still all, we definitely need to come together. There's no rejection on my end. You know, there's a lot of ignorant people out here. In fact, we had an ignorant radio show out there, you know, uh, two years ago, that, well, a year ago, rather, that tried to um, alienate everybody. Well, of course, it was done by an ignorant old man that didn't know what he was doing. But, you know, we're not like that. You know, now, I want to, any callers can get in within the next, and we lost a lot of callers because of that disconnection that we had earlier. But, as we go on, I still want to talk about how we can continue to keep the show rolling, okay, and going strong, all right? Become a Thousand Black Man's Option Patreon member, okay? That is very important at patreon.com forward slash C Tyler, T-Y-L-E-R, S-H-O-W, all right? Become a Patreon today for $5.00. We need a thousand Patreons, okay? YouTube is no longer funding the Charles Tyler Show on YouTube. All right, and that was the, basically the financial engine that was going through my whole show. But now that YouTube has done pulled the plug on our ad revenue, why? Because they want to control the content of our show. All right, they don't want me talking to the brothers like this. They want me to talk the way they want me to talk. Mm. Mr. Nice Guy, this and that, Mr. Whitewash, okay? You know, and I'm not going to do that for some money, okay? Therefore, I'd rather have our show viewer-funded, listening-funded, okay? All right? I'm held accountable to you guys, my Patreons, okay? And not to mention, I also want to do more... Um, uh, basically more um, activities, not just the beach party, all right? You know, I want not just the beach party in November. We want to have four events a year, all right? And we also want to not just make it in Brazil. We want to have all these events all over the world eventually, all right? But it's up to us, all my listeners and my Patreons, we go and we do support, Black culture media abroad, okay, mm -hmm. you know, and through black culture media abroad, we'll be able to um, bring more events, bring more brothers who can't afford to come down here to Brazil, all right, we can run, like I said, run raffles if you're a Patreon, if, you know, you're automatically in, all right, and like I said, who's to say? That $5 a month might just buy you an all-expense-paid trip to Brazil. Okay? You know, and that right there, and then who's to say when that happens? You might just win a trip and come on down here during Carnival or come down here during New Year's, when the best times to come down here at that. The New Year's celebration is something to see. Everybody dresses up in white, go out there on the beach in Copacabana, right? And they all, I mean, I mean, they all, it's beautiful, man. The fireworks going off off the barges, everybody in the water, women just grab you and start kissing you right there. Like, woo, like, where did that come from? You know, 
but that's the way you know these trips are like and i would like a lot of people to experience it and experience this like i said there's people out here who have, can't afford it but like i said you become a patreon today um black man's options a thousand black man's options patreon today at patreon.com forward slash c tyler uh, show or black uh, uh, patreon.com forward slash c t y l e r s h o w and we can take it from there um next week we're going to be um see if we can get us on the air and as usual keep things rolling like i said we're doing this from six thousand miles apart we're going to keep the show rolling all right, keep this thing, this global phenomenon, like as of the Charles Tyler show and living off the grid. Keep that thing rolling as well. This video will also be, the show is also being filmed on YouTube. All right, so we're going to be bringing it on there. And um, like I said, we're going to make it happen. Um, we come to the end of our show. All right, that's just about two minutes left. We won't be able to fill in one more car at this time. But we're going to try to make it happen as usual next week. You know, this is Charles Tyler with my man V. I thank all our callers that called in tonight. All right. And we're going to catch y'all next week. Same time, same channel. This is Charles Tyler. Charles Tyler right here at the Black Man's Option. Brothers, peace. <laughs>